Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome today to Lake Rayburn United Methodist Church. We pray God's blessings upon each and every one of you. Uh, the few announcements that we have are the... The 8th of February, we will be starting up with uh, our trustees will meet at uh, 4 o'clock, I believe it is. Three, Three o'clock. I'm glad she's here. <laughs> <laughs> and then at... Finance at 4.30. Finance at 4.30. Council at 6. Council at 6. So uh, we're going to have a... We'll be separated out so you won't be in a cluster. And if you bring your mask, if you don't, we'll have some. So please come and we can get the work of the church done. Uh, I am glad to see Miss Betty Bass back here. She got both her wheels fixed. And she, you can, she can be seen after church running a 100-yard dash around a parking lot. <laughs> she, she feels so good, she don't know what to do. I mean, I'm glad. I'm very happy for you for that. Very bored. You're ready to run around the park. Okay. Do we have any other announcements? Anything anybody needs to say? Okay. If we do not, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, your Son, Jesus Christ, who is now exalted as Lord of all, pours out his gifts upon the church. We ask that you would grant us that unity which your spirit gives. Keep us in the bond of peace and bring all creation to worship you before your throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now would you please stand and join me in the Apostles' Creed as printed in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. remain standing and turn to the back of your bulletin and we will be singing Here I Am Lord.
to our time of prayer concerns and uh, do you have any have special prayers or someone you know in these prayer or how about a blessing that we've received hey Betty Bass do you have any blessings you've received lately oh my lord yes <laughs> yes ma'am yes, I also have my uncle back in my mother's side and my brother yeah Okay, so your brother's my mother's brother. Your mother's brother yeah. okay, has passed away and his wife. So we'll be in prayer for her and the rest of the family also. Well, they only have one daughter left. All the rest of it has passed away. Well, you're part of that family, aren't you? Yeah. I'm yeah. <laughs> they're still in their race in Mississippi. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep them, the whole family in our prayers. Are there others? Yes, ma'am. They've all got the flu. Oh, wow. That's the first I've heard of anybody having the flu. Mm. Okay. We'll sure be in prayer for them. Ooh. Others? Okay. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for being with us today. You come and you spend time with us and you love us and you hold us. You remind us of all the love that you do give. Even in times when we turn our backs and walk away, in times when we sin against you, you still love us. How can we ever thank you? There's nothing we can do to, to thank you except just be the people you call us to be. And we need your help there, Lord. Help us to be truly those people you want us to be. Help us to be loving and caring. And help us to walk your way. And Lord, all those who are sick and hurting, those hundred people in that nursing home who are sick, the brother who has died and so many others bless them as only you can bless them Lord wrap your arms around them just hold them sometimes we think we have to say a lot of words to somebody to comfort them and the truth is we just put our arms around them and hold them that means a whole lot more than anything else we thank you Lord for doing that for us Lead this church, Lord, into the future. Help us to be truly who you call us to be. And now help us to pray the prayer that Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. time it is we uh, have the plate in the back that you may leave your offering there or, or please continue to mail them in to us or drop them off through the mail slot here in the fellowship uh, door we're so very thankful for the graciousness of each and every one of you you have continued your giving and we are continuing um, to do well we thank you so much it's only through your grace that we do Sins 
Testament reading this morning comes out of Jonah, chapter 3, verse 1 through 5, and chapter 10. The word of the Lord came to Jonah and said and a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, the great city, and proclaim to the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone great and small put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said would bring, would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Please stand for the gospel. This morning the gospel comes out of Mark chapter 1, verse 14 through 20. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me and I will make you you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat, mending their nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father, Zebedee, in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, the story of Jonah is an old, old story, and we've all heard it, or, or maybe as Sunday school teachers, one time you taught it. 
But I don't think there's a, a Sunday school teacher that's ever been for children that hasn't taught the story of Jonah and the whale. Uh, but still today, it holds a great profound uh, knowledge of faith to us. You see, God came to Jonah and he says, I've got something I want you to do. I want you to go to the great city of Nineveh. And I want you to cry out against your wickedness. And Jonah's going, mm, I don't think so. See, Jonah had a better idea. He's thinking, Nineveh's a bad place. It's full of wickedness. I, no, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go to those people. Isn't it, isn't it strange that he would say something like that? Because that sounds just like something that we would say today. When God comes and he says, I want you to go here and I want you to do this. And we say, I don't think so. I know what's better for me. I'll go do what I want to do and I won't do what God wants me to do. What was God thinking anyway when he asked me to do that? So Jonah went down to the docks at Joppa and he found a, a ship that was going to Tarshish and he got on board and he says, you know, surely God won't be able to find me here. I'll be in the hole of the ship out on the sea. He won't be able to find me and I'll flee from his presence. I'll go someplace where God's not and he won't bother me anymore. And again, this sounds so, so, so familiar. If God won't go away and leave me alone, then I'll just go away from God. But God wasn't through with Jonah. And he rolled a great storm against the sea. And such was that storm that the ship that Jonah was in was threatening to break apart. Now at that time and in that place, there were sailors that had uh, beliefs and superstitions. And they believed that if they were out on the sea and there was a great storm came up and they were about to be destroyed, that it was because somebody on board had done something terribly wrong. And if they could just get rid of that one person, if they could find that one person, get rid of them, then everything would be fine. So in order to try to find that one person, they cast lots. And the lot fell on Jonah. Today, you can still hear sailors talk about having a Jonah on board. That's, that's the, they call it, it's considered bad luck. But the lot fell on Jonah. And he told them, he said, yes, I'm fleeing from the Lord's presence. And he told the sailors, look, if y'all will just cast me into the sea, get rid of me. Let me drown. The seas will calm down. But the sailors didn't want to hurt Jonah. But the waves kept getting worse and worse and the wind kept blowing harder and the fear of God came upon them and Jonah was cast into the sea. He was cast out of their presence. And a large fish swallowed him. And he remained in the belly of that fish for three days and three nights. Now I'm going to tell you something that sounds awful familiar too. At least it does to me. It probably does you. Jonah prayed probably the most beautiful and heartfelt prayer he ever prayed in his life while he was in the belly of that fish. And don't we do that? When we get, times get bad for us, they get rough, and we get in deep trouble, we run to our Father in distress and we pray deep prayers, please help me, please, please. The most heartfelt prayers we have of all times, and even though during times that are not so bad, normal circumstances, we may not even have time to speak to our Father, not even time to stop and listen to what he has to say. Well, that fish spat Jonah out. But this time, when God came back to Jonah and said, now Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh and I want you to give him my message. Jonah went. That's a lesson learned. And he went to Nineveh and he cried out his message on the streets and said that, that the Lord had given him. He said, repent. Repent for if you don't in 40 days, the whole city is going to be destroyed. Everyone in it. The animals and everybody will be destroyed. That was a terrible message to bring to any place. But especially to Nineveh, full of wickedness, what would they do? How would they react to this message that this, this man they don't know comes in? A God who they obviously don't follow because they're doing wickedness. Well, maybe they'll kill the messenger. That was a normal thing to be done back in those times. If someone brought in a bad message, you've killed a messenger. 
But he continued delivering the message for God. Forty days and none of us going to be no more. And the people prayed. And they began to fast. The king heard about it. And he proclaimed a fast for those 40 days. He proclaimed praying for those 40 days. And he put uh, him and all the people put sackcloth on to show their signs of repentance. David went as far to put sackcloth on their animals. Now there was a fellow at the other church who caught a, a great big boar hog the other night. One of wild pigs. And we were talking about that, and I was asking him, can you see trying to put a sackcloth on that wild pig? So he was huge in no way. There's not enough people there or not enough people here <laughs> to do that to that wild hog. But they, they put even their animals in sackcloth. No one ate anything. And they ceased doing evil. And they were hoping and praying, that who knows, maybe God will relent. Maybe he'll spare Nineveh. And in God's mercy, he saw the people's sorrow. He saw their repentance. So God relented and he did not destroy Nineveh. Isn't that a wonderful story? And that's a story we've heard through all times. It's a great story. But friends, it, that story, it sounds wonderful, but all is not well. Our hero, Jonah, was upset about it. He was not happy with it. So he threw himself a pity party. Again, that sound familiar to anybody? Have a pity party? Feel sorry for yourself? He went down and he sat down outside the city and he waited. He says, I'm going to see. I want to see the, the destruction. I want to see the chaos that comes with the destroying of this city. Anyone ever have a pity party of their own? I think we all have. The problem is you, you invite people to come to your pity party and nobody wants to go. So you, you're having your pity party all by yourself. But I promise you, if you really want to get more miserable, you can do it when you have your private pity party. So God saw what was going on with Jonah on the side of the road and he caused a bush to grow up over Jonah to protect Jonah from the sun and the wind. It provided comfort for Jonah. And the next morning, God caused a worm to come and, and eat that bush so that the heat and the wind would strike Jonah and he wouldn't be comfortable anymore. And Jonah cried out to God, just let me die. He said, I knew that you were a merciful God. I knew that you were a graceful God. I knew that you were slow to anger and you were abounding in steadfast love. And I knew that you would relent from destroying Nineveh if they repented. I said this when I was in my home country. But you, Lord, made me come here. You made me tell the people you were going to destroy them. And now you're not going to do it. Just kill me now. You felt that way? Just kill me now. Things maybe aren't going our way. We're not getting maybe the things that we think we want or we need. So I don't believe what's happening right now. I can't believe that these things that are going on are allowed to be uh, uh, going on. Just kill me now. So God asked Jonah, he says, let me ask you, is it right that you were angry about that bush that grew up and covered you being destroyed? And yet at the same time, you had no concern for those 120,000 people and all their animals that lived in Nineveh. God hit him right between the eyes with the truth. And he ruined his perfect little pity party. God will do that, you know. He'll ruin your pity party. He will come in and destroy it. I believe it was time for Jonah to repent. And the one who was cast out from the boat, who was cast out from the sailors, became the savior of Nineveh. Yet he wasn't excited about it at all. He didn't care about it. But Jesus is another one who was cast out. 
And he's our Savior, and he's very excited about it. He's excited about you. The psalmist tells us to wait for the Lord. Wait in silence. Our hope lies in him. Our salvation can be found in him. The people of Nineveh had forgotten that. They believed in themselves and they forgot all about God. Their destruction became imminent. So God sent Jonah to tell them, change, repent, or be destroyed. The Israelites, they forgot God and their destruction became imminent. And God sent Jesus, his very own son, to save them. Repent or you will be destroyed. In our world today, seems we've forgotten the Lord. We've strayed. And you know, the things that for so many generations and generations that the Bible speaks of and that we get taught in Sunday school and we're taught in church and our parents teach us what's right and what's wrong and the things in God's eyes that are said to be correct don't seem to be right any longer today. The things our grandparents and their grandparents would never have thought of doing, it would never have crossed their mind, they seem normal today. Go to the beach. Go out here to Snake Island. What do you think you'll see on a nice, hot, sunny summer day? The music will be blaring. You'll see all kind of young girls running around in these little skimpy bikinis. What do you think your great-grandparents would have thought of that? Or their grandparents? When they first started making bathing suits, women recovered from their neck down to their toes and down to their fingers. Our society is, is looking more and more like Sodom and Gomorrah or even Nineveh. And the truth is not always the truth today. Right is whatever we decide it is for today. And it might change tomorrow depending on our mood or our needs or our wants. Our children are being destroyed by drugs and people are abducting them for sinful desires and our family units are under attack. At least 75% of the children today are being raised either by one parent or by their grandparents. My question for all of us today is, will we listen to what God has to say like the people of Nineveh and seek repentance Will we see the error of our ways and return to God? Or will we continue to deny God and go down just like Sodom and Gomorrah did? Do you know Sodom and Gomorrah, we don't even know where it's at anymore. Archaeologists are looking all over for it. They've got several different ideas. I think they've got it probably called down to an area about the size of Texas. It'd be almost like me telling you, oh, there was this terrible, terrible thing that happened somewhere in Texas. Go find it. It was so completely destroyed that we didn't even know where those ruins are to be found. That's how completely God destroyed them. So my call today is to repent. Repent of your sins and return to God. Now many will, will tell me, you know, I'm, I'm a good Christian. I'm not a sinful person. You know, I don't need to repent like all you sinners out there. You want to have to tell that person? You just move to the front of the line. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your holy scriptures that teach us right and wrong. Help us to cling to what is right and discard what is wrong, knowing that your truth is always the truth and it never changes. In Jesus' name, amen. Now go from this place with the love of God in your heart and cling to Christ and his truth. Amen. Thank you.